Hello and welcome to part number seven of the DIY BMS project. So in this part I just want to show a couple of the changes that I've made to this in order to make it a little bit more accurate and more reliable and I'll tell about my plans going forward with this thing. So I've made two changes to this. One is that I have switched out my in-channel MOSFET here for a P-channel MOSFET and this MOSFET was responsible for turning on and off the power supply current going into the batteries and I addressed in a previous channel why the in-channel MOSFET wouldn't work and it's basically because the power supply voltage was higher than the battery voltage by a certain degree and that was still allowing it to uh, turn on. So anyway by putting a P-channel fed in there that solved my issue with that and the other change that I made to this was instead of the old uh, Zener diode I switched that out with a TL431 voltage reference. So that gives me a fairly stable and accurate voltage reference. It should be set up for 2.495 volts, but in reality I'm getting like 2.488 out of it or something like that. It's within its 2% tolerance. So anyway, that should help my accuracy of the voltage readings by quite a bit. So looking at the schematic, we can see how this stuff has been wired in here. This green line is coming directly off of the uh, I.O. pin of the microcontroller. We go through a resistor and then that's going into the base of a uh, NPN transistor and then the NPN transistor drives the gate of that P-channel MOSFET. And then down here we have the schematic for the voltage reference. Uh, I hooked this up basically as simply as I could. We've got the 5 volt line off my regulator going into a 1K resistor that uh, sets the current limit. It's very similar to using a, a Zener diode, but it's not, well, but it's more accurate. But anyway, pins 1 and 3 are tied together and hooked up to the uh, 1K resistor, and then pin number 2 gets hooked into the ground. Then you just probe between the resistor and the diode just like you would with a uh, Zener. So. That was fairly simple setup. The only thing that's not on the schematic right now is the uh, the ACS712 board here that I'm using for current sensing. So this guy's not actually on the uh, schematic at the moment. I will have to change that in the future. So as far as the next step for this project goes, I want to get this thing on a piece of perf board and get it off of the breadboard here for two reasons. One is that the connections on the breadboard are pretty awful. I keep having issues where the power lines going into the Arduino or going over here as the ground references for the uh, the voltage dividers here. I keep having issues where those will get loose and it'll throw the readings way off. And it's just kind of getting annoying to deal with that. Uh, the other reason why I want to get this off the breadboard is because it's on my breadboard and it's taking up the whole thing and I kind of want to be able to use this for other projects. So. I want to go ahead and get this thing transferred onto a piece of perf board and that should help the accuracy and the stability of this thing by quite a bit. Now there were a couple of other things that I wanted to do to this before I really got it onto a perf board. Uh, I wanted to get proper MOSFET drivers and put them in here. I kind of decided not to do that because the simple transistors that I'm using in order to drive the MOSFETs seem to work just fine. Haven't had any issues with them and it's not like I'm switching these at high frequency so there's not really that much of a point in trying to drive them properly. Uh, and the transistors, I, I've done relatively high frequency things with the transistors before too and they tend to work okay. So I'm just getting to leave it the way that it is, transferred onto a perf board. I was thinking about getting a higher precision ADC for the Arduino and just hooking it up over a SPI or something like that, I squared C, one of those things. But I'm not really sure that I need that and I don't, I might still add that in, it shouldn't be that hard to do. One of the other things that I was looking into doing was actually using one of the uh, STM32 microcontrollers that are around the same price as the Arduino Nano. Those do have better ADCs and more output pins and things like that. Though I need to still do some more research and experimentation with those before I start to uh, actually use them in uh, these projects. And again, that might be something that I can still do. Alright, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that quick little update. 
I've pretty much just been waiting on parts for this. So, uh, so anyway, the next video for this thing will be getting it onto a piece of perf board and getting everything soldered up permanently in order to actually have a somewhat reliable system. So uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.